Okay. So he, regardless, he's he's out there. He's 17 years old, carrying a, an AR-15. Tell us from there, Andrew, please. You know, one of the interesting things that, uh, so there was a, a recent, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, pre-trial evidentiary hearing in this case. And uh, the it was it went on for almost three hours. And over the course of that three hours, the prosecutor made a lot of uh, arguments about uh, basically how Kyle Rittenhouse was a, a bad character. Uh, and one of the arguments he made was, uh, hey, look, he was walking around with an AR openly and there were other people at that rally who had like Glock pistols. They were carrying concealed. And, you know, those people, they're not um, triggering others, right? No one's aware that they have a gun, so they're not triggering some kind of assault of behavior. But if you're walking around with an AR, everyone sees you have a gun. And the implication appeared to be that, hey, Kyle didn't have to have an AR. He could have been walking around with a Glock instead under a coat. Nobody would have known about it. And it really struck me because it's it's such an incredibly specious argument uh, because Kyle was 17. There's no way for him to lawfully carry a concealed weapon. If he'd done what the prosecutor was saying he ought to have done, he'd have been committing a crime. He would have been committing a gun crime because he can't lawfully carry a Glock concealed. He can, under this weird version of Wisconsin gun law, carry a long gun openly. That's permitted. Um, so, he was actually the reason he wasn't carrying a pistol concealed was because that would have been criminal conduct. He was actually doing the lawful thing. Uh, so it's very interesting. I mean, the prosecutor also argued things. Of course, they're basically arguing that Kyle was a, a vigilante who yeah. takes the law into his own hands, but they couldn't really come up with examples of it. And the examples they did come up with were, were, were ridiculous. So there's this video people may have seen from uh, outside of a CVS where Kyle's not seen, but you can hear him talking. Uh, and apparently they're observing a robbery taking place in the CVS and the robbery suspect flees the CVS. And Kyle doesn't intervene. He doesn't get out of the car. He doesn't honk the horn. He doesn't verbally, he doesn't intervene in any way. All he does is call 911. And the prosecutor characterized calling 911 as Kyle Rittenhouse taking the law into his own hands and getting involved in situations where he doesn't really know what's going on. Folks, if calling 911 is taking the law into your own hands and being a vigilante, we have a real problem. Because my understanding was you were supposed to call 911 when you saw something you reasonably believed was reasonable conduct, right? See something, say something. That's what we're supposed to do. And when I hear the prosecutor make those kinds of arguments, again, it's like that misdemeanor charge. It tells me he doesn't have confidence in his arguments for the more serious charges. Yeah. So, didn't they try to make a thing, Andrew, also out of the fact that he was carrying a fire extinguisher? Am I that was another thing. He was taking the law into his own hands, getting involved in situations. No one asked him to put out those fires. The prosecutor's <laughs> arguing. No one asked him to get involved. He didn't have to get a fire. He didn't have to do any of that. And, you know, folks, one of the most common things I see on gun forums and, and so self-defense threads on social media is we'll have some horrible incident, right? We'll have some innocent victim in the street getting beat down or robbed or whatever the case might be. And you'll see a bunch of bystanders. Everyone's got their camera out there filming or they're just walking away. And the comments are full of outrage. Why didn't they do something? Why didn't they intervene? Why, why did they just stand there and let this poor innocent person be victimized? And there's nothing wrong with that perspective, folks. I, I completely get it. But I would suggest that perhaps one of the reason people are not intervening is because of cases like George Zimmerman, Ahmaud Arbery, Kyle Rittenhouse, because all of those defendants will tell you, we were just trying to do the right thing. Zimmerman was just a neighborhood watch volunteer who saw something suspicious. The McMichaels and the Arbery case, their defense is going to be, hey, we saw what we believe to be a felony robbery and the suspect in flight. And Georgia law, at least the Georgia law as it existed then, the citizen's arrest law allows you to make a citizen's arrest of a suspected felon in flight. And of course, Kyle Rittenhouse is saying, hey, I was just there to protect property and had a gun in case I needed to protect myself because violence was occurring. I was there to provide first aid. And he'll say, I never fired a shot except when I was attacked by these people. Uh, so, but all these people now, their lives are in peril. Zimmerman got acquitted at great expense and great tragic effect on his life for many years. Uh, the McMichaels, it seems to me, are likely to get convicted regardless of the legal merits. I think Rittenhouse is in a stronger position, but he's being charged for crimes that could put him in a cage 
17 years old when this happened, 18 years old now. He's looking at the rest of his life in a cage if they get this conviction. And any rational person could look at those consequences and say to themselves, you know what? I'm not intervening on behalf of a stranger. If someone attacks me, sure. Someone attacks my family, sure. If someone attacks other people, they better have brought their own damn gun because they're not my responsibility. 